back, I'm Tedward, and today we're driving a very properly modified Porsche 718 Spider. And the modification that this car just received is exactly what Porsche should have been doing from the factory, because now it has appropriate gearing. The biggest complaint that people had about GT4 and Spider when the 981 generation came out is that second gear was just too long. It's revving out to 80 miles an hour plus in second gear, making it not all that fun, A, on a racetrack, and B, on a public road, because if you want to wind out and redline a couple of gears, you're basically going to jail after second. You're already above the speed limit on the highway in second gear. But now, thanks to Demand Motorsport down in New York, this car has been re-geared, which means that second, third, fourth, and fifth gear are now shorter, close ratio gears, so you're able to exploit them a little easier, and it's a lot more fun to operate, because if you're going to option this car with the manual six-speed, as you should, should, as it's intended, a PDK is fine. But honestly, if you're gonna get one of these, you gotta go with the manual six speed. You might as well be able to row your gears ferociously and have some fun with it. So while two through five get shorter, six gear actually gets longer, making this car really exciting on the highway because now it's kind of happy cruising speed at about 3,200 RPM is 90 miles an hour. So it's pretty sweet at this point. It's a hell of a GT car and we're gonna have a lot of fun driving it today. Now, it is a beautiful spring day. It did snow yesterday, but hey, check this out. We've got an airplane coming overhead. There we go, we're at my favorite little airport. Now, Demand doesn't just do the gear, and they also build four and a half liter engines because from the factory, this 718 Spider comes with a four liter flat six. Now that's basically a punched out three liter twin turbo engine from the Carrera that they've, you know, reorganized for this purpose. This doesn't unfortunately get the GT3 four liter, which would have been a lot cooler, but I'm not complaining. Beggars can't be choosers. And if you're curious about the spec, we have driven this car before, but some highlights. We've got PCCBs and because of this gorgeous paint to sample maritime blue paint and the silver wheels, yellow calipers are not the vibe. It would have looked a little crazy. So that is an optional black caliper. Our friend, Willie over at PTSRS, he actually helped spec out this car with the owner. We've got the carbon buckets, obviously a six speed manual because you know, that's the way it's intended. And then beautiful leather deviated stitching, appropriate color on all the straps. And honestly, this is just probably my favorite Porsche. And now it really is my favorite Porsche because it has the gearing to back it up. This one also also has an Akrapovich exhaust and it sounds absolutely stunning. But you know what? This isn't the best sounding engine, but now it sounds a little better. But the point is now we can jump in and go for a drive and enjoy this gearing. And I think if you've got one of these cars, you're gonna be really tempted to send it down to Rick at Demand Motorsport. So let's start it up. We've got our left ignition. Love the way this thing jumps to life. I mean, we're already getting into third gear in just a tiny amount of space. Oh, this thing is so good now. possible with the old gearing like I feel like I'm really in a sports car now I feel like there are just no compromises here and prior to this it did feel like you know you were it's not a torque monster we have 400 horsepower but it doesn't have a ton of torque but now with this shorter gearing I can utilize that torque more. I can stay in that power band where I want to be. And look at that, 40 miles an hour. I'm in fifth gear. I can kind of cruise along, nothing too crazy. Sixth gear though, a little too long. That's a little too tall for this kind of speed. It can do it, but you probably don't want to be there. So you're going to find yourself kind of in that fifth gear, that fourth and fifth gear around town a little more frequently than you would have been 
prior to the re-gear, but I'll tell you, it's worth it when you get out to the highway. All right, here's a little taste of what it's like to wind out second. Now we're in the second, we're in the third. Now, where we would have been topping out second. Now, I didn't go all the way out to 8,000. We're still on a fairly slow road, but what's amazing is now that you can enjoy this glorious six-speed properly, you can enjoy the car more. I mean, this is the big thing right now, is everybody wants a manual transmission to survive, like this next generation, right? We wanna save the manuals. The problem is, the auto manufacturers, while often giving us manuals, are not giving us good manuals. Porsche and Honda, I think, are the kings of, of, of shifter feel. They're giving us the vibe of a manual that we want. But with Honda's rev hang and Porsche's gearing in their non-GT3 cars, it sometimes feels like a waste. It feels like, well, all right, sure, you gave us the manual, but it's almost like this, like, well, here you go, you jerks. Like, just take it. You asked for it. Don't complain to us. But with third-party companies like Demand, being able to take these manual gearboxes and make them like perfect, make them feel like really special, make them feel like old school race cars. This, this is great. It's nice to be in third and kind of have this torque available. Like that's a really nice feeling. Rev matching super natural because the, the ratios make a lot of sense very drivable and that's what I really love about this gearing is that it's only enhanced the drivability of the car this car so much now like it's amazing that you can just jump into this and go this fast now now this doesn't have the four and a half liter demand engine that's been built that adds about a hundred horsepower and a hundred pound feet of torque i got a ride in one it's outrageous it wants to rip the rear wheels off the car it's 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 so good it's so choice whereas this is just exploiting as much of this four liter as possible and it feels really lovely. So now you can tell we're in this longer six gear under 3000 RPM at 80 miles an hour, 82 miles an hour. That's a pretty sweet place to be because that's gonna allow you to kind of sip fuel. You're not overexerting this engine. It does have enough torque to do this where before you'd be sitting a bit higher up in the revs. The only thing you've got to keep in mind now is that the distance between six and fifth is longer than any other gear. So if you want to get that downshift, you've got to add that extra little blip. There's a little extra revs you're going to have to add in there to get that downshift properly. That close ratio, <laughs> it just makes you feel like you're on a racetrack all the time. Like, I love upshifting in this car. It feels so good. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm like really stupid for this car now. I really do love this car. I've always loved this car. I love the GT3, or sorry, I love the GT4 and the Spider in stock form. But honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna spend that 10-ish thousand dollars if I got a GT4 to have it re-geared because this is just such a game changer in terms of drivability and enjoyment. Like, why waste your time with a car that you can do the mildest modification on and completely transform. I mean, this is this is wild. And the 911 was always geared properly for the most part. I mean, even 996s, the, the gearing is just sublime. They always neutered these cars that came in and boxed her, even in GT form, which is a total bummer because they really deserved the world. This is a platform that could be a real contender. And now that we have the GT4 RS coming out, it feels like Porsche is gonna allow it to, to really stretch its legs and exploit this mid-engine platform. But they always just took these little steps, whether it was with the power or with the gearbox, to make it 
a step below to make sure that you knew that the 911 was top dog and this was not going to compete with it in stock form. And and frankly, it still it still kind of doesn't. Yes, we'll go get some fuel. I hear you. But when you can do minor modifications like gearing and wake this car up like this, I mean, it's just it's just so next level. It's just such a clever thing to do and it and it really works. The, the only caveat with this longer six gear is that you find yourself cruising a little faster because the natural place where you're gonna wanna sit in the power band is that around 3,000 RPM, which is gonna be about 80 miles an hour. Not a bad thing. It's just that if you are in traffic and you're kinda stuck at like 67 to 75, six gear can maybe feel a touch too long, like you're straining that motor. So you may want to be downshifting to fifth, in which case you're you're kind of revving a little higher and it might defeat the purpose. But you know, I, I don't see that as even remotely a deal breaker. this car that I just can't get enough of are these brakes because with these brakes you're able to trust it you're able to really like do things and exploit this car in ways that like you probably otherwise wouldn't it's a little salty we've got to be kind of cautious out here but man oh man I just love that you can use third like this now Like a total game changer, absolute game changer. This front end has so much grip, like I actually need to learn to trust it more. I'm like over slowing before corners, but it, it can handle way more than you give it credit for. someone over here. We don't want to scare people who are pulled over on the side of the road by attacking a corner right behind them. Oh, this thing is so good. I'll tell you, all right, here's the deal. Yes, you can go get yourself the four and a half liter engine and uh, oh, we don't need six. See, that's I gotta get used to that. We don't need six gear in like any scenario unless you're on the highway. The thing I, I, I love about this is now the gearing wakes up the car and I get the temptation to just be like, give me the power, give me the extra 100 horsepower, give me the shorter gearing, let's rock and roll. That engine, phenomenal. Rick has done an amazing job at developing this four and a half liter because it's pretty much right on the edge of what that block can handle safely right you're going to be able to use that engine you're going to be able to take it to the racetrack you're not going to blow it up they've done their research and they've got plenty of data points to show that it's going to hold up the thing is though if you're not trying to spend that kind of money and you just want to wake up the existing car that you have that you've already spent a lot of money on a gt4 and a spider are still hundred thousand dollar cars and if you're buying them on the second hand market probably comfortably paying 140 to 150. man this just does the trick. Um, I highly recommend it because I'll tell you what, if this gear set were an option on the Porsche build sheet, everybody, and I mean everybody, would check this box if they had experienced it. Not a single car would go out the door with the standard gear set. And yet, here we are with a third party who does it quickly, who doesn't charge outrageous money, especially for Porsche, to basically re-gear your transmission 
and it changes the whole thing. So, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. He's not paying me. I'm driving this car and I'm having a ton of fun in a car that I already loved and now I feel like the car is, like dare I say, kind of perfect. This is a really great streetable sports car and I, and I just am falling in love with it more and more as I drive it. It's already a phenomenal car. It already has the handling dynamics that you want. We already knew that this chassis, it's always overbuilt. It's always can hand, handle more power than, than Porsche gives you. But with this proper gear set, this is basically the best manual gearbox car I think I've driven that's new. Straight up, that's it. It's got the great feel, it's got great gates. It now has the appropriate ratios to sell the car, to tell the story of of this car and I just couldn't be happier. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know, if you were questioning if this is the real deal, what does it really do? Is it gonna wake the car up enough for me? Is it is it enough of a change to justify doing it? I mean, my answer is straight up yes. But I also understand we're talking about money and that's always gonna be a personal scenario. But uh, yeah, if you, can, if you can find one of these with the demand gear set, go drive it it'll it'll change you it'll change you and it might put a it might really change your perspective on gt4 and spider because i know look they're not gt3s they're not 911s i might prefer driving this to a 911 especially now don't forget to respect the drive and i'll see you in the next one side note if you're wondering about buckets if you're ordering one of these cars and you're just like hey I drive my car for hours and hours on end. Should I get the buckets? Maybe the comfy seats that are a heck of a lot cheaper are the way to go. Two reasons. Number one, get the buckets because the resale value. People want the buckets. People want the buckets on the secondhand market. But more importantly, number two, these are genuinely comfortable seats. I know it can be intimidating when you're like, ooh, I don't have control over it. I don't have adjustments to my lumbar support. I don't have adjustments to the back angle and things like that. I have put serious hours in car pole positions and in these buckets. And I know I might not be like the everyman size. I'm a little smaller, I'm a little skinnier, but I find these to be incredibly comfortable and I have no issues driving in these, uh, these seats for a very long time and a long distance. You will, you will not regret the money that goes into the option for the carbon bucket seats, I'll tell you that much.